I know the bigger picture is making you more present in your life. Why this form factor to show that to the world? This is the Humane AI pin. You know, I, I see the videos, but I haven't tried it. And this gadget has the potential to be a really big or really small gap between how I think it's gonna go and how it could actually go. Totally. What made you build it? The next phase of computers would involve AI doing a lot of the work for you. You know, when does it arrive? I mean, does it matter? I spent $700 <laughs> on this. Are you f***ing kidding yep. me? The AI pin gives you the power of modern technology with AI, with all these things, but not the distractions of a screen. Your AI pin can learn over time about you. You can teach it things, and it will use that to become a better assistant to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for bringing Duncan. I feel <laughs> of course. No, we have like the coffee love yes. in common immediately. When you guys were launching AI Pin, were you thinking about like, I know the bigger picture is making you more present in your life. Why this form factor to show that to the world? Yeah, I think, you know, it all kind of started when we had just left Apple. My husband and I, my co-founder and I, we left Apple in 2016 and we um, took some time off. We went to CES for the first time. We nice. saw a bunch of cool stuff. We were really just trying to learn, you know, where was the industry going? Where were people investing, like time and money? And what were people building? And there was this moment we went out to dinner and we were at the table and the family next to us, there were, you know, two parents, three kids, and all of them were on, were on their phones. Okay, like so just tragic. Yeah. Not talking to each other, not even acknowledging their existence of others at the table kind yeah. of moment. Wow. Now being outside of Apple, there was this, you know, process of thinking like, wow, we created this tool. We were part of creating this tool that was really powerful, really yeah. amazing, has done a ton of good, right? It has connected people in some ways, but it's also like, radically disconnected us from each other that are when we're sitting across from one, any, one yeah. another or like radically disconnected us from the world around us yeah. and has that as a byproduct like has it made us happier like what is the impact it's had on us and I think we saw some things that were going on in the industry with technology making you more you know bringing you more immersive tech yep. um, as a huge investment area we also saw what was happening in the AI space and I think you know Imran at the at that time believed that the next phase of computers would involve AI doing a lot of the work for yeah. you. And then we saw like some early prototypes. So what was the process of like this form factor versus like a wearable like watch or like yes. developing like just software like an app? Like why the hardware? <laughs> so a lot of people ask me about Imran's process. Like how does he work? Okay. Um, people ask like, oh, does he start with a problem space? And, okay. then, and then say, oh, this is the problem. And then let's think about a solution. And I'm always like, oh no, he's like already 20 years in the future, and Love he that. basically works backwards and say says, if this is the experience for okay. what it should feel like, you know, how do I work backwards from that and build what the answer is? And so basically what happened was I came home one day, I was out and about, and he, I came home and he was taking things apart in the house, and he nice. had this piece of paper and pieces of a projector that he had taken apart, and he had this one pager that he had written. And on the one pager, and I think the one pager actually leaked, I think you can find it online somewhere, but oh, no it, it effectively cool. was, this one pager that described a, a computer that you wear that's magnetic, that attaches through your clothing. He said to me, um, this is what we need to build. Like this is this is it, this is, the, this is the project. And you're more on like the software end, like that's like your area of expertise, right? Or were I, you also very involved in the hardware? Yeah, I, it's, it was kind of an interesting space, even at Apple where everyone, you're kind of all involved in everything, but okay. I worked in the software engineering organization on the program office side. Yeah, so what's the like technical behind the scenes of the software? Because I know that you guys mentioned there are no apps yep. and it's using multiple like large language models. Yep. Obviously OpenAI is like one of them, yep. but what's like the layout of that? At the heart of it, our software platform is called Cosmos nice. and Cosmos runs on the device and also in the cloud and on the server. And that's really important because there's some things that you want processed really quickly that you want, maybe it's maybe it comes down to speed and something being really secure um, that will happen on device. And there's some things that happen in the cloud. And we have uh, this layer that we call the AI bus that okay. essentially when you ask a question, we begin to understand, well, what is the intent of what you're asking? Okay. So in some cases, if you're asking a question that maybe is um, really timely, so like what's the score of the Yankee game, yep. right? We're gonna go to the service that we think can answer that best right now. 
if you ask a question like, what's the orbital period of Jupiter, right? Okay. That is something that Wolfram Alpha is really good at answering. So we'll yeah. route to that. This would be oversimplified, but it's like you ask a question and then there's a model in the background that's like, X model is really good at Y things, so we'll do that. Like, have you pre-programmed it or does it learn in real time what the best model is? Yeah, right now it's pre-programmed, right? Okay. Um, but over time we can add more flexibility and more functionality. We can, we're ultimately LLM agnostic, so we can okay. add as new things come online, we can route to new places as we bring on more services. So once we bring on, let's say, like ride sharing services and you say, call yeah. me a car, right? That, that would be cool. Yeah, in that moment, if you say, call me a car, we can maybe route to a couple car services. And so when you ask it a question, is there a like app that will show you like the history of the questions that you've asked or like what's the process behind the scenes? Yeah, so we have a web front end. It's actually not an app, it's, okay. a, it's a website. And that is because we want you to have flexibility on where you view it. Okay. So if you're an Android customer, you can view it on your Android phone. If you're an iPhone customer, you can view it on your phone. If you have a Tesla that has a screen in it, you yeah. can look at it there. That'd be cool. Uh, or TV, really, wherever. And you think about it as your personal homepage where all of your data lives. Um, you can view all your photos there, your videos. You can also see every question you've ever asked your pin. Whoa, so okay. you can view the list of everything. It also includes the answer. So if you asked a question and it gave you an answer, and let's say like it wasn't a great one, you can yeah. go in there and say thumbs down or okay. thumbs up. Oh, so, so it like can, learns. Yeah, so you can give us some feedback you also can delete it, which is really important. So if you ask a question, maybe you're like, oh, I don't I don't want anyone to see that or know about that, or I just want to delete it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even want to remember that yeah. I asked that. You can go in and delete it. And it's also, we never use your data to train models. That's something that we're really clear about. Yeah. Um, and over time, as we add more features where maybe we would want to use your data or someone would want to use it, our goal is to always be really transparent about what's happening and allow you to control it and say like, eventually maybe you might want to monetize off of your own data, right? Mm. And that, that would be something that you control. The One of the examples in the demo that I thought was sick is like the nutritional information. Yeah. And as that one becomes more accurate, that's going to be game changing for like athletes or just people that care about that. Totally. What are the steps between like where it is now and then like 100% accuracy? Yeah, I think that the, the nutrition was a, the experience was a decision we made of where are we going to start with vision, right? And I think that um, in our uh, release that's coming out, we're going to have vision as a beta for people to try Let's where go. you can, uh, we'll, let, we'll let you try it after yeah. this, um, where you can ask questions about the world around you. You can ask questions about objects. Uh, it's still early days. And of course, you've seen this in public demos from many companies where like it's a little slow um, accuracy sometimes is not great right this is a new way to interact with a computer that we're yep. still in the early days of okay what eventually sense. what you want it to do though is look at things that are a little bit more abstract yeah. right and maybe help you with like a dinner plate yep. that you've put together this is not a packaged good this is something that um, yeah, like did you cook with oil did you exactly cook with oil? like these are things that will just become better over time or even you could um, help it uh, understand things that are more um, maybe a little bit harder for us to do now around like allergies right these are something we're not doing yeah. now uh, we advise you not to use it for things okay. like that but that's super helpful right does this have gluten in it or does it have peanuts in it these are things that eventually would be really powerful we're not there yet um, but I definitely think that uh, we're on a path to get there which will be really great yeah I think it's so exciting to think about what the future will be with it like yeah. you'll be able to be completely present and then ask it the weather or to summarize like text messages yeah and then take phone calls you guys have a partnership right now with T-Mobile Yes. Are there other carriers in the U.S. that you're trying to partner with? Not in the U.S. Okay. And right now we're actually an MVNO. And so what an MVNO means is that we are essentially a carrier network. And so you yeah. come to us and you, uh, when you buy your PIN, you also uh, pay for a subscription service that includes your network connection okay. through the Humane Network, which is powered by T-Mobile. And gotcha. what that allows us to do is remove friction for the customer. So they essentially don't have to go worry about a carrier and a carrier plan. You can get that right from us. Um, so right now in the U.S., our exclusive partner is T-Mobile. We nice. announced recently that we're talking to international carriers and we're going to be bringing a pin, the PIN to new places really soon. Um, so those conversations are happening, which is exciting. Yeah, that is. And so is there, let's say that you have a phone and then you have the AI PIN. Now you have two separate numbers. Yes. Is there any way to get the messages on your phone as well? Or are they just like segmented right now? For right now, the PIN in, uh, includes a new number. So this okay. is when you buy the PIN, you get a dedicated number for your 
bigger pin. Um, we know that there are some people that want to bring their number, right? They want yeah. to port their existing number. Um, that's something that we're working on supporting for, okay. for our customers and we'll be rolling that out soon. But we know that still there's people who want to bring their phone number with them. So we're working with T-Mobile on that. And nice. so that means that your messages, uh, we support SMS on the phone. Over time, we'll be adding more uh, messaging partners, which we're um, working on now. So that will help as well. And does it support 5G? It does not support 5G. It supports LTE and 4G. Okay. And obviously on our roadmap in the next gen product, we'll be um, talking about 5G. Do you, is there like a, then an ideal customer in your mind or do you kind of hope that it's for everyone? I, I hope it's for everyone. And I, I know that's really ambitious. And I know that, you know, we've had some people tell us, like, no, you have to pick, you know, one group yeah. and focus on it. And of course, people who are like our early tech adopters, like they're super excited yeah. and that makes and me happy. And they'll be like the messengers for yeah, you. Yeah, they'll be yeah. the messengers. But like what makes me personally happy is that you know we have like my five-year-old nephew can use it and what makes me happy is that my mom is in our beta program yeah. and she just sent me a text message from her pin yesterday telling me that the pin went through the wash cycle and she's texting me from it and it works wow. great is it you water know, resistant i mean it, it should not be put okay. in the washing machine <laughs> but what i love about that is that my mom, who, you know, she's pretty tech savvy, but yeah. the fact that she loves it and she uses it, and then she tells me she put it through the washing yeah. machine and it survived and she's using it and she's super yeah. excited. Um, to me, those are the moments that get me really happy because I think that our goal was always to build something that was very universal and yeah. it should feel easy to use. It should feel like that it's accessible and that you don't have to be scared of it. Like, yeah. and well, I've done think, it like your entire career, which yeah. is so cool. Like, yeah. I feel like everything you touch is like really accessible to a lot of people, but also very techy. And I think like, like that's the exciting part. It's like when you can take a very complex idea, but then make it simple for consumers. We're also in a moment right now in technology where we're seeing so much innovation on AI and then like, a bunch of different ways to use tech. What do you think about like the Apple Vision Pro like and that type of um, innovation? Yeah, I think it's an incredible feat of engineering. Okay, nice. I personally have not tried it. I'm looking forward to it. Oh my God, try. we got to get to try I it. Have I would have brought it so you could see I it. I have to. Yeah. But I do think that it's an incredible, incredible feat. I do think that it's also very focused on a use case that's really powerful for certain things, right? Mm -hmm. Like being able to have that focused immersive experience for certain things is really great. Yeah. It's to me, it's not something that I'm going to wear all day or that I'm going to wear for extended periods. But for those moments, I can imagine that it's really powerful and yeah. really exciting. And I also love that they're that they're pushing things forward and trying new mm -hmm. things. Like we were talking about being a tech optimist. Like yeah. I'm a tech optimist. I want to see more crazy stuff. I want to see people trying new things. What's the like hardware roadmap? Because I remember in an interview, it was like, we're not going to do an update every year. We're going to really focus yes. on software. But when you think about like the next five years or like the roadmap, are there any thoughts of other types of hardware that would use the same software? We announced recently um, that people are exploring the option to license Cosmos. Whoa. And this is, this is a big deal because what our vision has always been is about Cosmos existing in both devices we build, but okay. also devices maybe others build. Um, we had Volvo and uh, LG invest in Humane uh, in our past round. Oh, and wow. that was really about how do we bring ROS to the home, to the car, um, and really about enriching the, your experience of using, of using your pin and using Cosmos. Do you ever want to do like glasses? I think that glasses are, again, an interesting form factor when it comes to something that you use for short periods of time. Yeah. I think there are a couple limitations to it that make it something challenging to use throughout the entire day. So yeah. battery life is not great. Yeah. Um, you're not going to be able to wear them all day and use them all day. Yeah. Uh, that's why we built our power system like we did so that you don't have to take AI pin off. You yep. can swap the battery in the middle of the day as many times as you need to or want to and never have to take it off. That's a huge barrier when it comes to wearables. And so I think you're struggling with that with glasses. I think you're also struggling with the fact that like it's not universal. Like yeah. I don't personally want to wear anything on my face. Yeah, it changes your appearance. Yeah, and I know yeah. it's very personal. If you were to wear glasses, you're going to choose a different pair than I'm going to yeah. pick. All right, well, you're amazing, and I'm so excited to test it in real life. Thank you so much yeah, for having us this and we're excited yeah, to show yeah, you. I'm so excited.